Hello, you are about to watch Richard Haynes' Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. It's another episode with Romesh Ranganathan. He's very, very funny. You, you watch out for him, he's going to be huge. Uh, and uh, if you uh, enjoy these, why don't you come down to the Leicester Square Theatre and watch one? It's only £15 to watch two of them, in fact, and uh, it's a great night out. Some of them are sold out already, uh, but there's still some more to come. Hopefully we're doing more in the autumn on Sundays in the uh, in the afternoon so you should be able to make those wherever you're from uh, but anyway without further ado let us go and enjoy Rich Tang's Left to Square Theatre Podcast Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. You're a much better audience than last week. It's, will you please welcome a man who's been drinking a delicious Yazoo backstage? And Vince Clark is furious about it. It's Richard Harry! Howdy! Hello there! <laughs> Welcome, this is the Leicester Square Theatre, it's beautiful, isn't it? And I am Richard Herring, this is Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. Or as some of the cool kids have begun calling it, it's Rehearsal Leicester Rehearsal 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 And uh, it's been a very exciting time. As we record this, uh, the, um, the FIFA stuff has been kind of going uh, apeshit. It's very exciting. By the time you watch this at home, it might be... Uh, might have resolved itself. Will, will Russia and Qatar have the World Cups? that they've bought illegally. <laughs> and if not, well, they're gonna have to sack everyone. It's gonna be her- brilliant. But I, I, I'm quite obsessed with uh, Chuck Blazer, uh, who is the gigantic, a lot of people have been comparing him to uh, George RRRRR Martin from uh, the Lannisters and uh, uh, Father Christmas. But I, I saw a photo of uh, Seth Blatter and uh, Chuck Blazer standing side by side. And I am pretty convinced that Chuck Blazer is just set batter in one of those kind of prosthetic fat suits. And uh, I'm, Jen, you look at it. If you look at it, you'll be... They've even gone as far as giving him prosthetic big hands. But apart from, if you look at the eyes, it's the same guy. And I'm kind of wondering whether Seth Blatter might all this time have been working undercover as a kind of FBI stooge. Maybe he's got carried away. I don't know. I'm not saying Seth Blatter's involved in any of this. <laughs> There's every chance. He's completely innocent. It's, I mean, be that, yeah, great. It'd be better than the current FIFA film, which apparently uh, in the first weekend in America, it's, it made nine dollars, <laughs> which is what they sold one t- in Phoenix. It's a one ticket. It costs like twenty million dollars to make. I don't know where they got that money from, uh, but uh, no one knows. No one knows where it came from. Uh, but I'm very excited about that. I'll quickly chat with uh, some of the audience, and some some familiar people. There's a very handsome gentleman here. Doesn't look unlike a young Seth Platter. Uh, not, un- not unlike him. Must be nice. You, you're making up for the loss of hair on your on the top of your head by growing a fine brown beard, sir. Can I say that? So you. you look very. It's a very good look. What's your name, sir? Uh, Adam. Adam. And uh, I was going to do a I don't know you from Adam joke and then I decided not to do it. That's what the little gap was. <laughs> and uh, what do you do? For, were, you, uh, were you the first man on earth? What do you do? For <laughs> the, what you couldn't see there was just the... Uh, uh, he, he, he sort of semi laughed. Uh, what do you do for a living? Um, I, I do, he's apple based and stuff. That he's, <laughs> what do you do? Sorry. You're a diplomat who works in, a, in Jakarta, fucking hell! That shit's a, a nuclear physicist who thought I'm going to be the most interesting person he ever has. He works a diplomat. I've got a, my, uh, my friend's an ambassador, Tony Brennan, do you know him? He's, he's in Australia now at the moment. Yeah. He's the ambassador in Australia. I have a deputy or the top one. Look him up, Tony Brennan. He plays cricket. He's a world uh, tiddlywinks champion. Yeah. Yeah, you know Tony. He's a good guy, oh, Tony Brennan. Is he a spy? We always think he's a spy. Is he? Can you say? Are you allowed to say if he is a spy? If he is a spy, just get the wink now. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly what a spy Ah, it's true. Equally, if he's not, I would say that. You would. So there's no way out. And you've been trained, haven't you? Probably to if a bloke, if a bloke with a camera comes and says, "Are you a spy?" You go, "No, I'm not. I am not." That's one. That's the first day of training for. That's very. So well, good luck in Jakarta. Thank you. There's a joke about that, isn't it? 
Jakarta. My wife went on holiday, Jakarta, that one. It's a good joke. So, uh, it's a good joke. Uh, so, with all these good jokes, all right, we've used them all up in the, in the opening. Uh, will you please, well, I'd just like to apologise uh, to... Um, uh, uh, John Thompson, who I uh, paid money to uh, ask Emma Kennedy a question, and then I forgot to do that. <laughs> yeah, but we got his money now, so what could we do? I'm gonna. What I will probably do is I'll, I'll get Emma. I'll ask Emma the question on Skype, and I'll get her to uh, video it, and we'll put that in here now. Or I might just ask our guest uh, this question instead because he hasn't got one. Uh, so will you please welcome my guest tonight? He is probably best known for his appearance on 50 Greatest Plastic Surgery Shockers. That's why you're... That's why you're here. It's Ramesh Ranganathan, ladies and gentlemen. Ramesh Ranganathan. Welcome, come in. Thank you. Sit down, pull up a mic. How are you doing? Really good. I wasn't expecting that shockers thing, mate. Pull no. that out of the bag, didn't you? Do you well, that's uh, nice of you, wasn't it? Yeah. Do, um, you, do you remember much about the, one of your first jobs, I believe? Uh, yeah, it was it was my first TV job. Um, yeah. I was very excited about it. Yeah. Um, they uh, gave me um, information on t 25 of the shockers <laughs> in advance, and so I sat and prepared. Um, and in the edit, I appeared in one. Uh, <laughs> and I think I said, that's a dude with breasts. That was literally... <laughs> that was, that was my only line in the whole thing. My dad was so excited. He's like, oh, yeah. the rum's going to be on TV. <laughs> what the fuck is this? You know, like, it was, you had to watch all of the shockers. I mean, my parents don't have an interest in plastic surgery <laughs> massively. So it was hard. It was yeah. hard. It was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a dark day for me. They are, they're a weird beast, those talking head shows. Well, which are... yeah, it, I don't... It's difficult because you sort of... You're at the you're at the mercy of how they edit you, obviously, yeah. and and also you know that you know I'm going to be honest, sort of show a secret. I wasn't I didn't have a pre interest <laughs> in plastic surgery shockers. Okay. I'm going to be honest, I did it for the exposure. <laughs> and, 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 and the worst thing about it was because I hadn't done any telly before, I had assumed that as soon as I do that, because I was doing a gig that night, and I just I was I was I was at the gig thinking. I'm gonna look at my phone in a minute, and it's gonna. <laughs> my Twitter is gonna blow up. Do you know what I mean? And then, <laughs> like, I remember doing my set. They're clicking on the Twitter and going, "Has it not gone out tonight? What's, <laughs> what's going on here, man?" Do you know what I mean? It's horrible. Yeah, it's yeah. Very, it kind of is. Uh, it's a weird thing with Twitter. I think it did work like, a bit like that in the early days, really. But now there's so much yeah. stuff to consume that, like, I, I, I know if I've been on Dave. Because one person will tweet about it. <laughs> oh, they're repeating, have I got news for you one day? If yeah. There's one person mentioning it. Yeah. Uh, and even now, Radio 4, I used to think when I, was, when I had a Radio 4 show, sometimes there'd be five tweets, and now sometimes I don't get any tweets after being on Radio 4. I, I did uh, an episode of the, the news quiz recently, okay. and the only message I got on Facebook was, could you work on your pronunciation? <laughs> that, that, that was... That was <laughs> That's the only message I got. Oh, it was, it was something like, could you work on your pronunciation? You made the show almost unlistenable. Oh. So, that... See, this while we were mentioning this briefly backstage, we were talking about Twitter, and in the old days, in the 1990s, when I was first on TV, uh, you'd get like people writing complaint letters. So that was the only way of getting in. People yeah. would write in, and, there would, and 10 people would write a letter like that. There was, in fact, one very like that for Lionel Nim Nimrod's Inexplicable World. world. And someone wrote to the BBC and say, can you explain to your continuity announcers that the stress on the word inexplicable is on the second syllable? <laughs> I don't even know which one. I think it's meant to be inexplicable or something. I don't even know what to do. With so you would just get these and we would print them up and keep taking them and go over yeah. half of them. Uh, and now, because it's on Twitter, you take that one person or on Facebook, that one person has this amazing... Power. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it sort of ruins my. I, I got I, I got like a death threat. By the way, I want to tell you, I do get positive comments as well. I, 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 don't, I, 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 I do want to make this clear, but it's just you, nobody wants to hear that, do they? So, um, I did get a death threat uh, via like my website. Somebody just came up and said, if I find out where you live, I'm gonna I'm gonna end your life. I mean, that's you know what a death threat is. I don't want to clarify. <laughs> I don't want to clarify. So, tell me, Ramesh, how did that? How exactly does that work? How do those go, those death threats that you, that you speak of? Uh, and I just thought, I was just, you know, I was eating, I was eating breakfast. I just yeah. think it's a, it's a weird... 
I think a death threat is bad enough. To read it while you're eating breakfast, I think is, is a, is a massive I suppose that is. It's the intrusiveness into your life at that, at that moment. Yeah. You just got it. We had a death threat very early with Fist of Fun, but yeah, really? they yeah. kept it from us for quite a while. And then they, and it was a phoned one. It was a phoned one. And it was after we'd done... Um, we'd done I think it was... They didn't really say what it was. I always thought it might be Victor Lewis Smith. It sounded like him doing a stupid voice and he didn't like our shows. I think it might have been him. But we'd done a sketch about Jesus... Uh, come, you know, what it was on about him knocking on the door and coming to the feast and going, did you not recognise me when I came? So we did a sort of stupid joke about that. And we actually, the BBC censored that because we had Jesus being slapped in the face by Stuart Lee and the BBC <laughs> wouldn't let it happen. <laughs> Jesus would shake and shut up. And they cut that bit. Uh, so there was, it was even more offensive than the person knew. But they said, they, they played us this quite chilling shape of a, of a, of a man saying, if, you, if the next episode of Fist of Fun goes out, it will blow up the BBC. Lots <laughs> <laughs> of hell. And, uh, At least you felt strongly about it, though. Like, <laughs> like, I mean, that's effort, isn't it? it is. like, you, you've, you've generated an opinion that strongly yeah. that it's going to blow but up it's the hard. We did the next one, and it's hard not to, you know, how the security was obviously up. But it's hard not to be looking at the audience going, oh, God, I wonder which one of these <laughs> people is about, <laughs> about to blow us yeah. up. But uh, we weren't, they didn't blow us up, but they, the BBC is shut down, and the Riverside Studios has been destroyed, so... Well, didn't they... say didn't say how long it was going to take. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so you were, like, well, you've been a relatively recent uh, to the world of comedy. Yeah. So you've only been doing comedy since 2010, is that right? Yeah, yeah, 2010. And yeah. you were a teacher before that. Yeah, I was a maths teacher. I'm quite, so I'm quite fascinated by <coughs> you. That's you're a teacher into your thirties. Yeah. Do, do, do we teach for ten years or so? Or was uh, like, well, teaching wasn't my first job. Okay. I, w I worked before that as. Uh, a cost analyst for an airline caterers. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the gold starts coming out, guys. <laughs> Strap in for this. Hello, Richard. You just struck a big vein of form here. We're going to get some comedy out. So basically, what would happen is, is um, I'll explain it to you. Because like it's, to know. Uh, you know, people are thinking cost analyst. That sounds like, for an airline caterers. Oh my god, double whammy. Tell us about it. So basically, what happened was, is I would do the co so you know the airline food. Yeah. So I would do the costing for that. So I'd, so basically, Air New Zealand or something would say we want uh, we this is what we want on a tray set up, and I'd tell them how much it costs. I'd have to charge them for the food, and I'd also have to charge them the labour of putting the food on there. So if they wanted an extra tomato half yeah. as a garnish, I have to charge them for the tomato half and for the person to go bang. Because, right. like, because obviously you would do that for free if that was a one-off. <laughs> a thousand times you're going to start getting pissed off. You, go, you know, I know I said I'd do it as a favour, but this is, this is taking the piss now, mate. Do you know what I mean? I want some remuneration for that. So that's what I did. I did that for a while. Did you have to charge them for you working at how much it would cost? Yeah, them? yeah, that, yeah. that would go in there as well. So do you know was, what I mean? Is that why airline food is so much more expensive than when it's on Earth? I, I believe all so, the yeah. cost analysts. I think so. I think so. But it was... It was, it was uh, well, it's as exciting as it sounds. Yes. I, 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 I tell you what did happen, though. I found the job very depressing. Um, it was like long hours, and I thought to myself, I don't know if this is my calling. <laughs> and, and I remember once, I was sat at the desk, and I was working, and I, had to, I was going to have to be at work till about 11 o'clock, because we had this deadline for some airline. And um, I just got up from my desk, I went to the toilet, I shut myself in the cubicle and I just cried for 20 minutes about, <laughs> about the fact I was doing <laughs> costume for it. Like and then I finished doing it. It's quite dark, isn't it? So I, I, finished doing, I, I finished crying and then I came back and sat down at the desk. But I felt loads better. And I started doing it like once a month, just, just every so often. When it started to get really stiff, oh, it's cry time, cubicle one. It was better than counselling. I just sit there sobbing, looking at the bog roll, just, oh God. Was it long hours for this job? How, how, so, did, so, how, did, it, so, how did it take more than just going, that's £1.50? So basically, what would happen is it's, it's actually a lot more complicated and a lot less interesting than yeah. I initially led you to okay. believe. So, 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 so what happens is, is you have to... So say, for example, yeah. somebody wants a lasagna on yeah. their thing, right? So you yeah. have to... Nice. You have to... Yeah, you have to find out. You have to find out the recipe for the lasagna, okay. right? You then have to phone up the suppliers for all of the individual items and get a costing for each of those composite parts. Okay? okay, you then have to work out how much it costs to assemble those parts, and you have to put it through this program, and then it tells you how much one unit of lasagna is, and then you multiply that out, and you have to do that for every single fucking thing <laughs> on that menu, right? And so. Um, 
And so it takes ages. And then what would happen is, is obviously, you would slack for absolutely ages and not do a lot. And then all of a sudden, you've got a hand in the prices like tomorrow. So then you'd have to do like loads of long hours. Like that week in the run up to, to delivering that package, you'd have to really. This is, I'm so sorry that I'm talking about this. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but as I was talking, I was thinking, just shut up, Ron. Like, yeah. this is, but why? You know, one wrong. of my first jobs was writing for the topical radio show Weekend. Oh, so you know uh, what I'm talking about. I do. Yeah. <laughs> and I, one week I got so depressed. About a year in of doing this, writing topical jokes, which is, yeah. you know, sounds more interesting than costing sandwiches. I was so upset and depressed that I got, there was newspaper crates where they put all the newspapers in the office and I got one of those newspaper crates and I sat in it and I got another newspaper cr crates and put that upside down on top of the crate and refused to come out of my crates. <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of, it was as close, I think if there'd been a knife or a gun, yeah. I if only just if, have killed myself. If only you had a nice little toilet cube <laughs> to go and put yourself in there. But it was sort of like people were around going, what's, what's going on? Our oh, Richard's got in, got in the crates. <laughs> and it doesn't seem to be coming, he seems to be staying in the crates. But I have to write another joke about John Majors being grey. But, but you still kept the job. Did they not think <laughs> this guy is not, it's not good for him to be here? Every no. so often he keeps getting into crates <laughs> no. and he won't talk to anybody. They let, they let me stay on, oh, stayed on and paid me £6,000 a year for writing jokes. Well, congrats. <sighs> yeah, it was back in 1990. That was, That's good beans, That was it? quite a lot of money back that's then. That's good bunts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you became a teacher. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's teacher. what I mean. You wanted to talk about teaching, I don't know, and I've I'm taken glad, us down the cost I'm analyst. Glad, I was glad. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in other jobs than I know about being a comedian. Who cares? Right, about yeah. That? Well, so basically, what happened was is that I'd cried a few times by this stage, yeah. and I thought you can't carry on just crying. You've got to do something. So um, I looked. I, I looked at. I, I thought. I'd, 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 I'd thought about becoming a teacher before, so I thought let me just give it a go. And then I found they had this like. GTP graduate teacher program where you didn't have to go back to university, you sort of do it kind of on the job. Right. They don't just like first day put you into a classroom, <laughs> but it's sort of sort of on the job. And um, and then basically what happened was I got in touch with them. They said, well, we're starting in like five days. If you come in for an interview tomorrow, we could probably get you on the program. So I said, okay. So I called in sick at the analyst place. God knows what they did about the tomato halves that day. <laughs> and, and, and then um, went in, got the job, and then like a week later, I was starting teacher training. So and and so and then just went to start becoming a maths teacher from there really. And it was um, you know, it was fun. Yeah. It was. Uh, well, I didn't. The truth is, I didn't want to be a maths teacher. What what happened? What what, <laughs> what happened was, I just wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. And. And I phoned them up and I said, um, I said I want to become a teacher. And they said, what do you want to teach? And I said, what have you got? <laughs> right, uh, 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 <laughs> 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 this is genuinely what <laughs> and, and, and maths was a shortage subject. So they were looking for people for core subjects. They said, well, maths, we're always looking for maths teachers. said, I'll do that. I'll, I'll come in and talk about that. But they were so worried about that conversation does not suggest that someone thinks that maths teaching is their vocation. <laughs> so, so they made me do a maths exam yeah. before, I, before they'd accept me onto the thing. And so. were you good at maths? No. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I, I was okay. You know, like I got, you know, I got A's and stuff, but I wasn't like, like fascinated, you know, like I wasn't no. driven by the subject. You know, I found it interesting or whatever, but no, I wouldn't say I did more, much more than other subjects I was studying, do you yeah. know what I mean? So, but the, the, the thing that did draw me to maths is the fact that I think maths is uh, it's, it's a subject that people develop such a negative association with, you know, and, 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 in, and in that way I sort of enjoyed the idea of the challenge of trying to teach maths in a way that people didn't develop that fear of it or whatever, do you yeah. know what I mean? And you'd see it in like parents even, like parents would be scared to come and talk to you, do you know what I mean? Just, if a parent was going to be difficult, you'd go, well, we've been looking at trigonometry and they'd go, yeah, anyway, thank you, Mr. Ranganathan. Uh, it's been, this has been so useful. I remember just bugger off, it's great. My dad's a maths teacher, was the maths teacher. Really? Yeah. Did he enjoy it? Uh, I think he did, yeah. He, he taught me, I mean, he was my headmaster as well, and he taught me uh, oh. A-level maths. What was that like? Uh, it was all right, because that was, the, the being taught was all right, because it was in a small class. So there's right. only five of us in the class. But uh, your dad? My dad was my headmaster, yeah. But didn't he get really frustrated? Because my dad taught me times tables, and it was some of the worst times of my childhood. <laughs> like, like, he would, I remember him saying once, I can't believe you're my son. <laughs> like, 
I remember him being, one of my earliest memories is him being very, very frustrated with me about not, I couldn't do an eight properly. I could only do an eight by drawing a circle on top of another circle. Yeah. I couldn't do that. And if I did it, it came out like an infinity, which I think made me much cleverer. Yeah, than, you know, I was drawing infinities before I could do eight. Uh, and I remember him, I, I have a memory of him being really cross about it. And, and he was cross when I couldn't um, multiply as well. And I remember sitting in a cupboard under, a st under stairs practising like Harry Potter, but practicing <laughs> eights because my dad was so furious about me doing eights. But he was actually, he wasn't like that in the classroom. Right. Didn't no, sit under the cupboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got <laughs> Richard off to the cupboard, mate. Off you go again. You don't understand calculus. I did, which I didn't. I got A-level maths without understanding calculus. Right. And then I so what, for, how did you do that then? I don't know. I got, I got like, a, I did maths in a year and got a B and I had no idea what calculus was. I think I understood sort of how to do it, but I didn't know what it was about. Yeah. And then when I, I did further pure maths, uh, and then my dad sort of taught me at home what calculus was. I can't remember what it is now, though. Can you help me? Is, no. it, is it important? No. It doesn't seem important. You seem right? to be, do, do you use calculus in nuclear physics much? No, it's not useful, is it? That's the thing. It's, not, it's got no practical application, is it? Shut up. Stop. You're spoiling everything. What is the derivative of x squared? Yeah, has that guy got it before you did? This is up there with the cost analyst banter. For... <laughs> my, fa no, my audience like this. Oh, do they? So, yeah, oh, this right, is, okay. they, they, to be honest, they would like it more. It was just more maths questions <laughs> and less talking about cocks and stuff. They would be a lot happier. They put up with that for the occasional discussion. I, I, had a, I remember having an awful experience. So I, was, I, I went and did a master's and we're doing an exam in econometrics. And, uh... That's not a thing. Yes, it is a thing. economics <laughs> or metrics. So you yeah, but you bring two those, things. Fuse those together. <laughs> okay. It's like a thundercat. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so I was doing econometrics, and basically, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah. And I, it's a three-hour exam. I wrote my name, <laughs> and then I am sorry. That's the only. Those are the only things I wrote on the paper because. Because I couldn't do any of it, and I thought to myself, he's going to be so disappointed because he spent ages <laughs> teaching us, and I can't answer a single question. I thought, I've got to apologise. I mean, he's going to fail me, but I've got to apologise. I don't want him to think that I don't realise how shit yeah. this is. You know, this is bad. And uh, then we're coming out of the exam, and loads of people are going, um, oh, it's so tough, wasn't it? And I said, yeah, I didn't want to, let, I didn't want to say what I'd done. And they're going, it's so tough, isn't it? But I imagine it was that tough. Don't worry about it, they'll probably lower their grade bounds. And I thought they'll have to lower them a hell of a lot for me to get a mark for correctly spelling Ranganathan. I mean, I, mean I, I know some people find it difficult, but I don't think they're going to pass me a, on that. If he was a dead poet society kind of teacher, you would get the best mark. In yeah, the, exactly. Yeah, just, yes, he is. Sorry, stand on your desk <laughs> and sit. I'm sorry. So, what turned you, what turned you away from teaching into. When, uh, I think so in your 30s, which is quite late these days, I think. Very really. late. In I mean, fact, I think I was... wrongly so. In the, when I started comedy, mm. as a ridiculously young idiot, yeah. uh, there was a lot of comedians who'd done proper jobs for years and then yeah. become comedians, but that doesn't happen much now. No, well, I, I, I sort of... Um, I remember... Well, basically what happened was I actually did my first gig when I was eight years old. Right. Um, I was at a Pontins holiday camp. <laughs> I don't know if there's any Pontins crew in. It got closed <laughs> down, but you know, what a shame. Blue coats. Just completely different. <laughs> anyway, so, um, and they had a talent competition, and I entered the talent competition um, as a stand up. Right. Uh, what I did was, uh, my act was, I delivered it entirely in a Sri Lankan accent, right? <laughs> and did sort of jokes. That were, I, had, I had a joke book, three, 3001 jokes. And I don't know, in that, those days, very, there's a lot of anti Irish racist jokes in that. <laughs> so, what I did was, I was offensive is a double whammy. So, so what I did was Sri Lankan accent, anti-Irish jokes. That was, that was the package I was delivering. Anyway, I won the competition. I don't need to tell you. <laughs> that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't happen every day, does it? Seeing that kind of act. And then I sort of hit 30 and I thought, do you know what? I should probably capitalise on that momentum and give this another go. But basically what, basically what happened was I'd, I'd watched I'd watch stand-up and I'd always loved stand-up. Hello. <laughs> I'd always loved stand-up, but I'd never... I just, it just hadn't... I don't know if it's because of my... I think it's, you know, slightly my upbringing and stuff. Like my, even though my parents are... My parents are very 
they, they're not traditional Asian parents, but they're traditional enough for me to want to go academic, and you know, that was sort of a, it was assumed that I was going to go to university, yeah. it was just, you know, all of those sort of things. And so it hadn't ever occurred to me doing something outside of just sort of business or medicine, or I mean, medicine, the grades ruled that out, but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but you know, business or whatever. And then just later on, I just thought, I'm just going to give it a go. But even when I first started doing stand up, I didn't think that I was going to leave teaching. I just thought it's going to be, you know, I, I just give it a go, just have a go at it. Um, and uh, I blagged my way onto a gig, and the, the gig, the first gig that I did was actually your, your wife was on that, yeah. that same, same gig. Uh, I, I blagged my way onto this gig, and um, I, I, start, I did the Sri Lankan accent thing again, <laughs> because I thought that worked so well at Pontins. <laughs> Why let that go? So I did it for a, a bit. Yep. Um, I was supposed to do five minutes. I don't know how long I did. What I can tell you is, <laughs> They flashed the stage lights on and off. <laughs> a, a part way into the set. Uh, and then I came off and... I, I mean, I had... I died. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think that... I don't think only that was my worst... That wasn't just my worst gig. I think that was the worst comedy gig ever. It was so bad. I, I saw someone afterwards in the audience and I said to them... I said, oh, actually, that was my first gig. And he said, you sort of... Because you, you, you got the confidence, but... You didn't tell any jokes. Like, it's, 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 you, you, you didn't do a single joke. I thought what I was doing was jokes, but it wasn't. You know, because it sort of... It looks so easy. You know, I, I, I sort of thought... I sort of thought arrogantly enough that I was going to be better than... I, I was dreadful. I bet everyone's dreadful, aren't they? I, I think mean, they pretty a, much are, yeah. apart from uh, Peter Kay, who apparently is fantastic, according to his own book. <laughs> According to his own autobiography, every gig he's ever done, he stormed it all the way. Ever, all is the that way. right? Oh, okay. That's what he's doing. His autobiography is really worth reading. For, is it? Is for it? That yeah. alone. I'll check I, it I out. think I talked about it last time. Uh, so I won't go through it. It's, it's a joy. Is it? Well, it's true because you sort of think that if you're an honest comedian, you've got to go, even if you've. You know, even if you are really good, yeah. and even you've done a lot, even if you've been going for 20 years and you do a yeah. hundred really good gigs in a row, you do one that's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, every now and again, and you go, yeah, I didn't storm that one. <laughs> the audience hated me and wished <laughs> I was dead, and I'm glad you care less about it after yeah, yeah. 20 years for you. But it, does, it doesn't hurt as much. Uh, you are part of the vegan mafia that has now taken over comedy. <laughs> Yeah, man. That's what the. That's how you get on TV, you know, by not eating things with faces. Well, I just what I thought. <laughs> what I thought was, I'm Asian. Yeah. I've got a lazy eye. <laughs> I need to tick another box. <laughs> and, and, and and I saw veganism, and I just grabbed it with both hands. Um, I sort of. I, I, I was. I was vegetarian. So, like when I was twelve, I read some book about vegetarianism. And then I came home and I told my mum I didn't ever want to eat meat again after reading this book. So I was vegetarian, but I'd always thought that... I'd always thought that dairy... I just think dairy is weird to me. Like, uh, the whole concept of breast milk from another species kind of freaks me <laughs> out, do you know what I mean? And eggs, just weird. Yeah. And so I sort of thought I wanted to give that up, but just hadn't done it for a long time. And then a few years ago, I just thought, oh, I'm just going to try it. And uh, so I just said... I just said to everyone, I'm going vegan, that's it, I'm going vegan. So I did, and uh, it's hard. Yeah, I bet. It's, it's harder than becoming vegetarian. Vegetarianism, I think, is well served by society. Veganism is... Uh, well, cheese, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, like, <laughs> cheese is so difficult to replicate. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> The, na the amount of time, I'm not exaggerating, in the last year I have spent, I reckon, 500 quid on vegan cheeses. Like, because every time I hear about a new one, I buy every version of it in the hope that it will be nice. <laughs> and it isn't. It isn't. You know, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, the cheese, I had no idea that cheese was so magical. You know, what I mean by it is properties. You can eat it raw, but it also melts. The, it's incredible, <laughs> right? Vegan cheese can't do that. Vegan cheese, you either... It's the male version of dairy cheese in terms of it can't multitask. <laughs> vegan cheese, right? You, you either get one that you eat raw or you get one that melts or you get one to sprinkle. You have to buy all sorts of different versions. What do they put in vegan cheese to... God, no, magic? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't... It's not magic, actually. It's definitely not magic. I think it's like potato, starch and oil and... Prayer, and <laughs> just hope that this is going to taste sort of acceptable. I, 
it's 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 horrible, and and I I, I, I don't learn. I, I I just basically because the thing is is that I just have to accept that I don't. I'm not going to eat cheese, but I can't accept it. So every time I hear about a new product, I think this is going to be the one that tastes exactly like cheese, yeah. and it's not. It's not, and and you know it's uh, you know pizza has been ruined. Yeah. Um, Especially uh, with ham on it. Yeah, that's that one. Really you can't good. have that. That's really good. You can't have that. You cannot. The ham pizza. I mean, you spend all that time getting rid of the cheese, and then there's ham on it. You think I've sort of defeated the object. Here. But um, yeah, it has a, I mean, you can get good vegan pizza. You know, you can get pizza without cheese in it. But I prefer pizza without cheese in it than I do to pizza with vegan cheese in it. I just can't deal with it, mate. I can't get on board with it. It's just a sacrifice I've had to make. <laughs> and you know, I'm a better person than you. That, that, that's just... I don't think I could ever give up yogurt. That is the problem I have there. Oh yeah, you're a big yogurt fan, I'm big, right? Not any more than an average person. <laughs> average what is your favourite? Um, I probably, at the moment, I like uh, Muller Light uh, yogurt. I, yeah, the Yazoo drink is going to become the new one, but the, uh, the Muller Light... Uh, Few different ones of those. I'll tell you what I used to like yeah. before I went vegs. Yeah. Is uh, <laughs> they did a banana yogurt, the Muller Corner. Oh yeah. With the chocolate cornflakey yeah. sort of bits. Yeah. That, have you, that's, that's a good one, right? It's, an that it's not. You've wasted some of the yogurt space there with some stuff that isn't yogurt. That is, that's my problem. With my that. issue. I'll tell you my issue with that product. Apart from the fact it's morally corrupt. <laughs> is, <laughs> my issue with that product is I could never. I never eat it. And kept the ratio how I wanted. Do you know what I mean? There was always too much yogurt, or I had dry flake. Like, I never got it perfect yeah. to the point where I was finishing both the items at the same time. Yeah, they should almost just mix it in themselves in a fair amount. Yeah. <laughs> they should. Rather than expecting you. But to it's fun, isn't it? It's someone, fun. And probably someone's cost analysed that and realised the amount of money they've saved by not having someone to place. You're being you're being the chump putting your own tomato into you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're making a point one of a pence every time yeah, you do that. I never thought of it, just resenting them for the work they're making me do. <laughs> I've got the flakes in there, I've got myself, the bastards. <laughs> yeah. But that was the best one. That's the best one, right? Is it? Yeah. Is there a... Yeah, see? I don't go for the corner ones. I just like plain, straight up. Yeah, yogurt. no, I know. Why would you like fun? Yeah. <laughs> not meant to be fun. Yogurts aren't meant to be fun. Uh, so... <laughs> Like, look, I ask uh, a lot of my guests this, so I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But if you were going to commit a terrorist atrocity... <laughs> First of all, should we cut the bullshit about you asking all the guests this, all right? I know what's going on here, mate. I thought, I thought long and hard about this, and I thought, shall I not ask Ramesh this question? And then that is racist, because I asked Bob Mortimer. Right. Or should I ask him, in, which is also racist? Okay. But if you had to do it, I just think that I, I've come up... I came up with one this week, but I've forgotten. I'll have to think what it is. I came up with a good one again this week about how to kill lots of people. I think about it a lot. Oh, no, what, what are you asking me? Are you asking me, uh, are you asking me what I'd want to do, what act I'd want well, to commit, I, or how I, I would do it? I think of unusual ways. That, and I, I see it as a service to the, the secret services. I come up with potential <laughs> terrorist plots. If they listen to my podcast, they can go, oh, we will look out for that. So I've come up with... Uh, women having false implants that are explosives. My right. recent one is having a Barocca plastic, you know, explosives in a yeah. Barocca form that you can add water to on the plane and then create yeah. your. That's one of the more, the more recent ones. Yeah. Uh, so I just. I, what I'm nervous about yeah. is that you are just going to take the snippet of me talking about this out and then it's just going to be me going, and then what you need to do to. <laughs> What you need to do to end the infidel? <laughs> I think uh, suicide bomber. Yeah. Explosive tic tacs. Okay. When you're ready to go. Yeah. You just go tic tac. No. Say goodbye. <laughs> uh, and then just to pinch it. I think that's what I'd do. That would work. I think. Yeah. Or any other small. I think that's you know, anything promote. that's solid that would then become a liquid and then explode. Yeah, I, 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 was, I just think I was they're really, not doing well enough. The I was really. <laughs> they're not trying hard I enough. I used to get really interested. I, I got really fascinated by the shoe bomber. Yeah. Um, what was he thinking? <laughs> like, it, it's, it's. Why do the shoe, dude? Like, it's such a weird strategy for doing it. What, what, like, he's got to ignite his shoe. Yeah. You can't do that in a subtle way. <laughs> just sort of like, at some point, someone's going, mate. <laughs> what are you doing with your shoe, bruv? <laughs> <laughs> I 
And just sort of just do something like pocket bomber. Yeah. That's easier, isn't it? It is. Tie bomber. <laughs> why are you, why are you going for the, sh the furthest he's thing from you? And he's sweating. Hat bomber. All of these things <laughs> easier than shoe. He picked the worst item. What's wrong with this prick? I love like, the idea of a hat. Hat bomber. <laughs> yeah. Just twist the peak. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, I, so I think, like, if, why, I, if I was going to blow up a tube, I would never do it. And if you're listening at home, if you're thinking about doing it, don't do it. It's an awful thing to do. Yeah, but, I, I would never do I would never. <laughs> but put, you know, get one of those wheelie soup bins with the, the handles that go up and down like that. That's and then amazing. you can use that as a detonator. Yeah. You don't even have... To... But then the only other thing, if you're at a long queue and you just yeah. get fed up and leave, <laughs> that's the downside of that. They always comically go when you don't want them they to. Do, they do, they yeah. do, you're right. Yeah. And then, you know, that's not funny <laughs> if you've killed a load of people and yourself, is it? <laughs> it is it's the wrong people. That's good. Yeah. If you were going to assassinate a public figure... <laughs> I, I had the chance to kill Michael Gove this weekend. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. There was no security. There was no security and just two children there. I mean, they might have been his, that might have been his security staff. Because a lot of politicians just pay their families to do all those jobs, don't they? So yeah. okay, you two can be, you can be my bodyguard. If anyone tries to kill me, throw yourself. I can have more children, throw yourself in front of me. So if, if you ever been in a situation where you've kind of been with, in a room with someone who's either gone on to do something terrible or someone you hated, you kind of thought... Because that's what's kind of interesting, I think, now. You get... Like, I've been to 10 Downing Street and Buckingham Palace, yeah. and they don't really check you because you've been invited well i sort of um i sort of uh, i've been in a room with kanye west right <laughs> and i would like to assassinate him yeah yeah and and and, and the reason is, is I, I i i'm a hip-hop fan okay are your are your fans hip-hop fans are they they're very cool yeah. these guys yeah. are so I, I i i'm a hip-hop fan and i went to see i went to see i used to be i am still a fan of kanye west i think that his music is interesting and i think he takes risks unfortunately he is a prick. You know, like, like, everything outside of the music is unacceptable. Yeah. But, but I do find his music interesting, and I used, to really, I used to really like him. And I went to see his... And the thing I liked about him is most hip-hop, I love hip-hop, my problem with it is n most of these artists don't devote enough time to the, the, live, the live show. You know, you look at rock... Every other form of music, they think about live performance, and I think hip-hop is the, the art form that doesn't. It does it the least. So okay. many times I've been to see somebody that I really like and the album has been ruined by two blokes just shouting in a muffled way into a mic that they obviously haven't tested before they arrived. And Do you write them a letter saying, your pronunciation ruined that game? Yeah. <laughs> Rendered the show unlistenable. <laughs> um, so anyway, I went to see Kanye West and, and the thing that, the, 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 to his credit, he had done an amazing show. It's called the Glow in the Dark Tour. Right. He had the whole stage set up like a spaceship. And um, the, you know the whole the whole show was about him travelling around from planet to planet. Yeah, not great, but it's a concept, isn't it? All right, get off my back. So um, there's one point with my I was with there was my wife who, by the way, had said to me, "You have been so annoying about getting here on time that I'm never coming to a live music show with you ever again." <laughs> so that's just a little insight to my marriage. So anyway, but so watching Kanye, there's one point where the spaceship lands on some planet and this alien appears on the screen. And the alien says, I'm Zeta Gamma 17 or whatever. And everyone's going, oh, God, this is crazy. Where's the story going to go now? <laughs> and then he goes, hey, hello, Alpha Zeta 613. My name is Kanye West. And then the alien thing goes, we know who you are, Kanye. You're the brightest star in the whole universe, right? And everyone in the audience went, yeah! And I thought, he wrote that! <laughs> like, that's not an alien saying that. He made it say that. And we're all like, yeah, he is the brightest star. <laughs> that's when I thought, I'll kill him. That, that, that's, that, that is the point, which I thought, I'm not a fan of this dude anymore, man. He's got to go. If I get the chance, you are done. <laughs> good. I think it's a good reason. He... He followed one person on Twitter. You know, I don't like this not following anyone. Yeah. And then he picked one person. Yeah. I don't know if he's doing it still, but anyway. Anyway, if you're out there, Kanye, watch your back. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I've been trying to come up with an autobiography title for Alan Sugar's autobiography. On Twitter, he asked people to come up with titles for his autobiography. Right. Because um, I thought that was quite lazy of him. And yeah. I was going to get a lot of people saying, you're fired, Ed's, and so on. Uh, I've got a few that I've, I've done before. Another one okay. was, 
Well, I came up with my bloody Bannantine, but it would mean you would, before the autobiography came out, you would have to get into a fight with Duncan Bannantine from Duck Dragon's Dead that he right. then won. Uh, and took, made him bloody, that would, then that would be a great title, right? I mean, you know, I'm, it was hard to come up with loads. <laughs> I thought that one... Okay, what, would you, what would you call Lord Alan Sugar's uh, autobiography? You've been on you, your fight, right? You know yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. Did you meet Lord Alan Sugar? I did. He's, he's a bit of a dick. <laughs> well... Uh, do you want to go on your fight again at some point? <laughs> well, no, I don't think... I, I don't... I don't... Well, I didn't really talk directly to him no, at okay. any point. And... Also, he's a Tottenham fan. Okay. And I'm a gooner. Woo! What's that noise? <laughs> uh, so obviously that means... I, I just sort of... Uh, I one didn't, bloke. <laughs> I didn't chat to him, but I got the impression that he thought I was really funny. <laughs> I think he detected a vibe in me. Uh, and I thought he found me amusing. Yeah. I really did. That's I know, because I, I never... <laughs> Oh, piss! Up. What's wrong with you? <laughs> You're cackling at that for. <laughs> Did he say you're the brightest star in this universe? <laughs> okay, Alan, could you say that, please? Just, if you could just repeat those words for me, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> my answer, my phone message. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a bit off of it. I do. I, I don't think he's dick. I like him a lot. <laughs> and I'd love to present the. the What's your problem your with him? Uh, I just think he's a bit, he makes some odd choices, like asking people on Twitter anything. <laughs> like, he asks people on Twitter, what's the Tottenham score? And you kind of think, well, why don't you just look on the internet where you are for the Tottenham score? Are you an do idiot? You, There's loads you, of people who are going to tweet you the Tottenham score, and loads of them are going to tell you of the wrong score as well. Because oh, yeah, <laughs> it's Twitter. Uh, and he, he tweets about what's happening in Tottenham games. I retweet it, because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> he, yes, the, one, the weekend he was tweeting about the tennis, the, the French Open. Uh, and he was going on about how uh, the guy who won, whose name I don't know, was rubbish and was never going to beat uh, jo Djokovic. Yeah. And, uh, and then he started... <laughs> and he went, wow, I never saw this coming. <laughs> oh, yeah, we know, you were just saying. <laughs> but do you, do I sometimes... Do, do you sometimes tweet to bait people? Yeah, I do a lot with Alan <laughs> <laughs> I quite like I quite like tweeting... It's quite fun to tweet something really obvious. <laughs> and then... Just watch people have a go at you. It's quite yeah. fun. Like if, if, like, if this football and Liverpool are 4 0 up, and you say something like, I think Liverpool might go on to win this. <laughs> you know, it's quite good. And then you just sit back and watch your timeline. You're a prick, mate. <laughs> it's good fun. I quite like it. There's a great uh, Twitter feed called Yes, That's the Joke, which is when people have done a joke and then someone will explain the joke back, which happens. Oh, that's I, a good joke. Yeah. But I quite, I quite want to start doing it as a joke. <laughs> And then when people send me, yes, that's the joke, I can then tweet them out and go, yes, that's the joke. <laughs> so, because I quite, I, I really am tempted all the time to just go, well... <laughs> I, I, I had, I had a, uh, one recently where I, I tweeted, and admittedly it's not a great tweet, you know, I apologise for that. I'm not very good on Twitter. Um, I said something like, it was just after Chelsea had won the, the Premier League and they were doing their parade, and I said, great to see Chelsea fans out celebrating, uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, on another note, can anyone source me a shotgun immediately? Right? No, so it's not, now, now, that's not funny. I admit that. Somebody replied to me saying, I'll give you the shotgun just after I've started killing all the Chelsea fans. <laughs> I was like, yeah, mate. Well done. <laughs> that's the kind of thing I do. And then you do that, and then I would go, I'd be laughing at you for not realising that. I was <laughs> and then yeah. you wonder, if it's a bad joke, someone makes a bad joke, I quite like the idea of just misinterpreting it deliberately. It's getting onto levels of meta that I'm not sure... I can't get into it because I know that people just go, God, Richard Herring doesn't really have a very good sense of humour. He doesn't. Do, do, you ever, do you ever delete... I've sometimes deleted... I wish there was a thing on Twitter that just, just before you tweeted, it went, are you really? <laughs> because I've tweeted stuff and then just quickly deleted it and then someone's gone, oh. saw you take that away. Well, now I've got to the point where I... I type things and think about it and often just say, don't bother. I just think... Do you not, really? Yeah, I just think... I've got to the point with social media where I just think, I don't think it's worth... Yeah. Um, I've had a couple of things that have been taken either, you know, that have been taken out of context or, you know... Oh, OK, yeah. ...got bigger anyway. But also, you just sort of think it's not worth... Is this joke... I just think, is this joke good enough to warrant the ten people who are not going to get it or are going to go, well, I think you'll find this, or, you know, or just be offended by... It. Yeah. There's so many people now trying to be offended by stuff... And, and wielding away into finding a way to be offended by it, that I just think it's not worth. The joke isn't good enough. If the joke's good enough, I'll do it. But it, but often I'll go, 
Yeah, I quite like that, but the, uh, so many people are not going to get it that it's not worth it. We, we, I had a, pro a thing once where I, was, I did stand up for the week, this Channel 4, that topical show, and me and Paul Chowdhury and others were on it. But what would happen is every time the show would go out, somebody would tweet me something about something that Chowdhury had done in his set that they thought was me, <laughs> right? And vice versa. Uh, and it got to the point where I just started pretending that stuff they said to me was Chow. I just started tweeting any time, even if somebody said something about me, I go, no, that's Paul Chowdhury. <laughs> and then at him, I just watch it. What are you talking about, man? This ain't me. Do you know what I mean? Just like, it's really good fun. It is a, it's a good place to just be a dick on Twitter, as, as most people have discovered. But then people are a dick back to you. Talking of which, if you, uh, if you, uh, I've got a thing called Desert Island Dicks. Oh, do you do this with everyone? Yeah, not everyone. Just the people I've noticed have got a tattoo of Richard Pryor on mm -hmm. their arm. Do you, do, the t do you really do the terrorist thing with everyone? Yeah. Well, I didn't do it with Emma. Right, how come? Because you know, girls don't do terrorism. <laughs> 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 I'd forgotten to ask her, all right, look, I'll ask the question I was meant to ask now. Because of that, this is what you're going to get. All right. I'm going to ask the question that I should have asked Emma okay, Kennedy. Go for it, mate. Uh, this is from John Thompson. I don't think it's John Thompson from Cold Feet and the Pied Piper sketch from Fist of Fun. I think it's a different one. He asked you, <laughs> Ramesh, uh, the thing for, oh sorry, what would it take for you to fillet the comedian Richard Herring? <laughs> is that really the question? <laughs> You were not going to ask her. <laughs> I was, well, I was, because I, the reason he's asked that is because I do a question sometimes where I ask, what would it take to fillet the actor Keith Allen? So he's taken my own question and turned it against me. It would have been fun. I think we got from the Emma Kennedy interview what the answer to that was. <laughs> do you, uh, you two... It sounded like you two. Yeah. Something, sounded like it, something it? could happen. It could happen. It'd be a weird day when that happens <laughs> for several reasons. But... Uh, <laughs> Well, there's a lot of events that have to take place. There would be a lot of things. Uh, but what all, a fantasy. All the other women would have to be dead. <laughs> and, uh, no, she's, we're very good with... <laughs> Someone getting that late on. Yeah. <laughs> so, just because I would, wouldn't want them to look at me afterwards. <laughs> After what I'd done. I don't know, we're very, you know, we're very close. There was one occasion where I did try it on with Emma. It How did you, what was your move? Uh, we were sleeping in the same bed. Hello. And, move, and actually, my move wasn't unlike what we were talking about. It was just to just kind of pretend I was asleep and casually move my hand you go into for the ar arena. Into the arena? Well, into her, not into her arena. <laughs> <laughs> not straight off. <laughs> Did you do an arena dumped, announcement? Ladies arena. and gentlemen, Richard Herring's hands! <laughs> I think I tried to touch her, her arm. Right. And then How did that go? She, when she laughed in my face and said, what are you doing? And then I just pretended I was still asleep. And she said, I know you're not asleep. And I oh, God, that's her. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> And then he went... <laughs> <laughs> no, so I feel cringe. It was cringy. Oh, mate. We're sleeping in the same bed. When you're a 21-year-old man, that sort of thinks you know, your brain goes... Yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a chance. More than a chance. Just see what happens. <laughs> yeah. And went now, for the arm. And usually, the, yeah, the arm. Usually, usually when Herring does the arm. <laughs> really, that, that pays off pretty well, let me tell you that for now. <laughs> So what would it take for you to fillet the comedian Richard Herring? What would you need in return just to make to Just make an easy to undo fly. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know, is it, mate? Good to know. Good to know. Just let me know if you want to make it happen. I uh, will. Well, uh, so um, I'll ask you a different question. Okay. Then the des I'll ask you one that I've never asked anyone before. Well, you, I, I know that you can't have done that egging. I was egged the other day. It can't be. Oh, what? Oh, this is a question. I'm doing a show. My show this year is about happiness. Yeah. And is it possible to be happy? Do you think it's possible to be happy? And what is the secret of happiness? There you go. Wow. Some of so us, this, uh, the sound man just went... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was like, wow, that's a deep question. Or what a fucking shit question. No, but you know when the sound man makes a noise backstage that you can actually hear? <laughs> He's forgetting. <laughs> forgetting his job is to not make sound. It's to record sound. Not make, that's the make sound. George, his name's George. He's rubber. He's rubber. <laughs> Well, what do you think the secret of happiness is? Um, Are you happy? Um, 
I don't know. No, I, well, I sort of, I, to me, I was having a conversation, I've, I've had this conversation quite a bit recently. All right. Because I, I was sort of thinking about, you know, like, you, you know, it's something like doing comedy. You don't, because I'm happy at home, I've got a lovely family. This, my second child, there's issues there, but, 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 <laughs> but, gen, but generally speaking, I'm happy, right? I'm happy at home with my family. And, and you sort of think, well, that job wise, comedy doesn't feel like something that you ever. F like, I wondered if you ever have a. We, I call it the, we call it the swimming pool moment, me and my friends, where you're sitting in your swimming pool and you go, I've done it, I've made it, I'm happy now. I don't. I, want, I think it's sort of in human nature to keep chasing for something. I don't think that. You, ever, you don't ever think, I'm, st I'm, st I'm done here, I'm happy, I could just yeah. stop. I think you're just constantly chasing something elusive. I think it's just like human nature to, to keep going for something. And then you die. <laughs> so that's... I think I'm happy. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm sort of happier than I was. Yeah. I think. But, you know, but also... It's, it's interesting that the things that bring you happiness then bring with them the problems of, of lots of unhappiness around them. So that's what I've been... Mean, having a well, baby, I, for example, has made me very happy. Yeah. But then also made me extremely anxious and unhappy well, a that, lot of the time. That, that's what happens when we had... Because, you know, we, when we had our first child, obviously second and third, you stopped... You're not bothered, but the, 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 the first, the first, <laughs> when we had the first one, it opens this like door of like worry and nervousness and whatever, and it got to the point where I don't know if this anxiety is worth it. Like, I mean, I love him, but dude, this is so stressful. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Every single symptom, I was straight on mum's net. Why was I going to mum's net? But I, I was going to mum's net all the time, and I could link any symptom to he's going to die in about 20 minutes. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It was crazy. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. You sort of have this amazing happiness, and then there's all these worries. You get paranoid about it going away or something damaging it or something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's Not with the second one. But. <laughs> 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 the third one, though, again, does it come back on the well, third Well, I'm or still even on less the so. fence. I'm on the fence. Oh, yeah. how, was the, how was your the youngest one? Nine months. Okay. So he's uh, he just started sleeping through. Yeah. Um, it's quite a chilled out dude. Yeah. Um, How's this four months on? She's sleeping from eight till six. That's quite good, isn't it? Are you shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is incredible. <laughs> it is. You're not really a parent. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. How would you do that? She just we give her a lot of milk just before she goes to bed. Right. And she's quite lazy, I think. <laughs> Keep her awake all day, just shaking her yeah. all day. <laughs> I remember, like, with, <laughs> with, our, with our first, I left, left him with my mum, like, we had, like, our first night out without the baby, and uh, came back, and my mum had it. You know, it was like, way after his bedtime, came back to pick him up, and my mum was holding him. She's going, he just, uh, he didn't want to go to sleep. And his <laughs> eyeballs were on stalks. So, I mean, it just, it's obvious my mum was just going, no, wake up, wake up, no, 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 you're not ready to go to bed. <laughs> it's horrible. Man. But it's, there's an element of that when, when the, I mean, it's not worth doing. When I come home from a gig at two, you know, I haven't seen her all day, and then it's like two o'clock in the morning, and she's just cute in the game. Just come and have yeah. a little, little cuddle, a little play, but no, it doesn't work. I forgot to do something in this episode as well, even though I was talking about forgetting to do something. So I'm just going to quickly do this. This is for Rupert Franklin. Love it, legend. Are you in? Yeah. Wow, this is fantastic news. Uh, <laughs> uh, you are a fucking idiot. There you go. <laughs> did, he, did he pay to have He paid money, money for that to happen. <laughs> Why are you an idiot? Because I paid money for he paid me money to call him oh, a fucking like idiot. Oh, it's like a... <laughs> it's, oh, it's like an infinity loop. The Just snake eating his own tail. That's what that is. Oh, it's oh, nice to see Rupert. It's not Rupert Franklin. It's a nice... It's a kind of... Are you related to any of the famous Franklins? No. No. How do you know? You seem very sure that you're not. Have you gone back in time and just checked that you're definitely not? Yeah. Franklin Mint? Benjamin Franklin? Is that, what they, is that what you got called at school? I got called Rupert the Bear at school. Ah, Rupert the Bear. Good one. Why was that? His name's Why Rupert. was that, do you think? Because his name's... <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing that? Yes, that's the joke on him. <laughs> yes, that's... No, that's the joke. No, that was... The, my, I was doing the joke. There. Well, thank you, uh, Rupert. That's nice. Isn't it? That's nice when it pays off. Thank you for that. We did a kickstart so we could film this and then people got little, little benefits. 
I've been right. making t-shirts at home. I've got to do. I saw one of the. I've got to do seventy t-shirts. Right. And what do you use to make the t-shirts? I've got like uh, my favourite thing I've managed to find is just some. <laughs> they're basically for children, and they're squeezy things. Yeah. And they're sort of squeezy pens, and you squeeze, and then loads comes out, and it feels to me like something uh, that like Gilbert and George or someone or Chris off of Philly would do. You know, the one who doing, certainly works in excrement, doesn't he? Chris are you doing themes or is it just? I, it's all stuff based. So far, it's, I'm trying to do seventy different things based on this uh, podcast. Right. It's quite hard. So a few of them are the same, <laughs> but they're not exactly the same. They're all different. But I've got like uh, there's one put a Shrek in it. That's a famous thing for the people. See how see how people. Oh, look at that! Yeah, that was that. oh, that was yeah. electric. <laughs> <laughs> I was wow. loving it so much that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I looked through my, I looked through my, uh, <laughs> through it for different things. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's quite, it's quite good. <laughs> so none of that stuff you said about happiness was really useful for me in my show. But thanks. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit behind on my show this year because I usually do Edinburgh. You're doing Edinburgh, right? You know, no, no, I'm you're not. not. No, I'm not. I thought you saw your website said you were doing Edinburgh preview. I was going to. Oh, are you? I'm not anymore. Have you got some big TV job that's uh, taking you away from that? Or just thought, fuck it. I just sort of, uh, just sort of, just sort of like money and yeah. and <laughs> self esteem. <Yeah. laughs> so. You've done very well with well, up there with the last couple of shows. I find it. I find. I find, uh, I find Edinburgh um, really hard. Like, I, 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 you know, I, and I haven't done anywhere near as, as many as you have, and you're a, you're a stalwart and a legend. And I know I'm aware I'm speaking to a legend as I say this, but you know, I, I find I like writing the show. I like going up to, you know, I like the, I, I like being excited about having a new show. But I, I find being there really difficult. You know, like the the, the scrutiny that you're put under. Yeah, yeah. It's um, what I become <laughs> as a human being, I find unacceptable. <laughs> you know, I, c- comedians are self-involved as it is. You know, my wife, but last Edinburgh, my wife gave birth during the festival. Yes, I noticed Right. That, yes. And I, I, I remember one day saying to her, I've had a bad review, can you get some perspective? <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> it was pretty bold, a few comedians have done this, it's pretty bold to say when you know in, in advance enough with a baby that you're going to have a baby in August. Yeah. So that's pretty bold to go... Yeah, we're going to edit. So you all went up to Edinburgh. Well, no. We, what happened was is that we, yeah, we well, I, we we found out the due date was due in Edinburgh. Yeah. So I said to my wife, I said to her, "Look, I've written a show." <laughs> no, no. I, I I said to her, "I'll pull I'll pull out of Edinburgh." Yeah. And she said, "No, uh, uh, no, don't do that. You should have pulled out earlier if you were going to pull out." <laughs> <laughs> have, I, have, I, have, I, have I done it? <laughs> <laughs> no, and um. And, she, and then I said to her, well, okay, but um, what, how do you want to do this? And she said, I'll just come up with you and have the baby in Edinburgh. And she said it so matter-of-factly that I became convinced it wasn't a big deal <laughs> I, until I told one of my friends, and they said, dude, you're a horrible person. <laughs> Look, you're such a horrible... But um, it was... Uh, well, it was, you know, it's fine. It was, the NHS is much better up there, though, right? Oh, it, it was so great. Yeah, it weird. was lovely. They had, like, a hot tub... <laughs> <laughs> and like a big TV and everything, yeah. it was great. And then, uh, but the only issue we had was that um, they said to us, "I'll register the baby when you get back to England." So we came back to England, went to register him, and they said you should have done this in Scotland. <laughs> and you know, there's a deadline, isn't yeah. there? And what happens if you miss that deadline? I think Does they send you. Someone was discussing it. Someone, I can't remember why someone did miss the deadline. And then what happens? Your baby's just a fugitive. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're off the Forever. matrix. Right, they can't, just do, they can't off, do off the grid. <laughs> just off the grid, man. So anyway, so, the, 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 so I said, okay, so the, 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 we had to make the appointment. The, the, the only appointment I could get in Edinburgh before the deadline was on the day of the referendum. So I flew up to Edinburgh on the morning of the referendum. And like the, the office I had to do it was a polling station. And like... So I was having to make my way through all these demonstrations <laughs> and stuff. And then I went and sat down and the guy said, uh, where in Edinburgh do you live? And I said, oh, no, mate. I don't live in Edinburgh, I'm just a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> I've come up for the morning. And yes, I have picked a day, correct. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was going to, fo- I was basically registering my son and finding out how much of a foreigner he was going to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, was, it, was, it was good fun. It was good fun, but I'm not doing it again. No. You're not, not going to go to Edinburgh again? I probably, you- no, I will. 
I will do, yeah. but I, I, I just, uh, I mean, do you find it difficult? I find yeah, it really I just, hard. well, I've increasingly found it just, I've just realised, and I've enjoyed the last decade of it a lot more than maybe the first decade of it, Yeah. but I've just realised I was spending more times unhappy, you know, there's more, de- there's enough days of depression up there to yeah. kind of go, do, do I really want to put myself through this? Even when the show's going really well and everything's going right for you, still, the pressure's very intense. And I think there's just too much competition and, you know, it doesn't make sense. But I think what's interesting is whether, you know, the knowing that's coming up in August dri- drives me somehow to create a new show. Yeah. And so even though I'm doing the new show in September, I'm, you know, A, it's September, so part of me's going, oh, you've got a bit longer. Yeah. Uh, but then I realise I haven't got quite as many gigs in as I would usually have. Yeah. And then you go, is it, am I going to actually create, you know, and I'm, I'm only doing the show once rather than 20 times. So will the show, I've got to make the show yeah. really good on the first, on the only time I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. I'm going to tour it afterwards, but, you know, as I start it. What I, what I found was, you know, you do all the previews. You do the previews in the run-up to Edinburgh, and I do loads of previews. But what happened was is that I would have the previews so close to each other that I wouldn't change the show in between. Yeah. So I was just basically touring a crap show. <laughs> different preview videos. This didn't work last night, let's give it another bash. Exactly the same. Let's see what you let's see if you go for it. Do you know what I mean? But I do that, I find it works though. It does it but it, it over over a long period of time. But even when I'm touring, I'll be get I'll, there'll always there'll be a bit and I'll get to every night and go, Oh no, I need to do some work on this. <laughs> and then I'll get there the next night and go, Oh yeah, I need it. honestly twenty nights in a row of going yeah. But then suddenly on stage, something will, you'll, you'll suddenly go, rather than sitting down and writing it, I find that things change. Because you've done it enough and then you, and yeah, you, you're working on it somewhere in the back of your mind and actually in the white hot heat of the st- being on stage, yeah. you're more likely to come up with the perfect way of saying something than sitting down at a desk and yeah, trying to write true. it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, it's, in a way, I'm, you know, I'm sad I'm not going, because, just because of the, having another hour. It's yeah. lovely to like go and do this hour that you've just written and it feels new and you know it's exciting um but yeah i do find the whole process very difficult yeah and and you know it makes me not appreciate childbirth <laughs> <laughs> but also you've got three kids that's you know so you, so you take your whole family up with you the whole time well i did month. i did i didn't i don't normally yeah i didn't normally and last year i did it for the first time right. because my wife was due to give birth yeah that would have been rude to you know, yeah it would have been, been rude to leave the other two but, yeah. yeah well <laughs> Uh, rude, but better. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but I, uh, but then I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it much more having them up there. So I think that I will do that. You know, when I go back, I'll yeah. do, I will do that every time because it's good fun. Because it's good. You just sort of, you're not a comedian during the day. You're off like, no. in, you know, doing doing family stuff. It's fun. And there's so many great kids shows and stuff. Up That's there, right. So. Yeah, yeah. so it's good. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's good, wasn't it? That's what is your problem? <laughs> like, you, you... She enjoys my uh, embarrassment. Yeah. That's what she enjoys. She knows when I'm going. Well, she knows when I'm filling. Or he, yeah. if it's a, could be, I'm, you know, I'm judging you as a, I can't see you. And you could be a high voiced man. <laughs> Are you a woman or a man? A lady. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded very much like someone, a man putting on a lady's voice. It did, didn't it? Yeah, it did. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, we've got, we've got, yeah, that's all, we're all welcome here. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, have you ever tried to suck your own cock? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm human. <laughs> so, like, of course. I have. Did Mar- was Mar- is everyone? Is this a cl- is this a cliche thing? Or Marilyn Manson could do it, right? Oh right, no. That's... Have, uh, have we heard this? I, I, don't don't know know if I don't know if anyone has. It's not true. You're supposed to take it out his ribs. Yeah, that's what I heard. How do you know it's not true? Why would you deny that rumor? <laughs> like, I don't understand what's to be gained from saying that's not true. That's amazing. I can suck my own cock. If somebody thought that, well, there's no way that, I'm going to refute. Then they will go, I'm like, if you can do it yourself, I'm not going to do it for you. You don't want that in a book, do you? Oh, I can suck my own cock. Well, that's the end of blowjobs for you. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you can't do it. If you can't actually do it, then Can you imagine no that? Jobs. And then you'd really be trying, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've been going for it with all your might. Take out all my ribs. <laughs> I'm not sure. I just don't think taking out ribs would make any difference. Um, not unless you stuck one into your <laughs> cock and sort of what, extended skin, it from yeah, extended underneath. Extended it inside, so up the up the urethra, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it would be good if you were, you know had erectile dysfunction. A rib is always going to be is always going to be maybe a bit sharp. <laughs> 
Uh, you know, <laughs> I want to know where this is going. Well, Carry you know, so, if that, goes, so yeah, if, yeah, if you could push that and then stretch the skin, it's quite yeah. stretchy skin in the penis. Yeah, I do know a lot about penises. Do you? Yeah, I've written a book, a whole book about yeah. penis. Yeah, uh, so it's quite elastic. Yeah, I mean, it can get you can be, you can break your penis, so do be careful. You can genuinely break it when it's erect, so do be careful. Uh, but uh, you can't when you're putting a broken rib into your urethra, <laughs> please be careful <laughs> that you don't actually break your penis. And then it would be, and then if you stretch the skin along, like a rib's probably, I don't know, how long's a rib? It's longer than my penis. <laughs> Let, can I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> you said you can break the penis. Yeah. But there's no bone in it. No, but you can do, you can do something that effectively, uh, you can, if it's, you know, like sometimes when you're uh, having sex, uh, the angle can be a bit wrong. And if you go in a bit too hard on that, you can do enough damage it's, to your penis to essentially it's, break. It, it's funny, you sounded more awkward there saying having sex than you did <laughs> about inserting a rib, <laughs> a rib. into you. you then you were, know, you were really confident. You didn't hesitate at all. Then all yeah. of a sudden, having <laughs> sex. That's when, that's when you got shy. Weird, isn't it? It is weird. How'd you get the rib? I was supposed the rib would it? You'd have to put the rib in through your pelvis something. Yeah. I think it might work. We came up with a good idea for something backstage. That's our second invention. Yeah. We should, you and me should get together. Yeah, I think and this old rib urethra stuff is <laughs> really flying with this audience as well, isn't it? We've got a lady here who can help with uh, big businesses, putting businesses together. Can you, can you sort us out in getting this yeah. business sort of, uh, broken? We'll take out people's ribs. Well, uh, men, probably. Or women who want to have a massive penis with, with a rib in it. <laughs> Yeah, and then you can, can you help us with that, sort that out? I'm looking forward to yeah, seeing the t-shirt, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> they're good, they say, those squeezy, I mean, do you know those squeezy pens? They're good, that's what we're talking about. So you squeeze Is them. that what we were talking about? <laughs> what we were talking about ages ago. You can break those as well. <laughs> they're squeezy and then you get loads out and it's like a, it's like a three-dimensional t-shirt. That's what, I hope no one wears these t-shirts I'm making because they are... I see them as works of art, not as things that, you know, you wouldn't make a skirt out of the Mona Lisa. So don't wear it. If, I, if you get one of these T-shirts, treasure it and, you know, hold on to it. It will accrue in value. You don't want people to wear it? I don't want them to wear it. Because, I, I, you know, I'm not going to iron... You meant to iron them on. I haven't got time to do that. So if you're going <laughs> to... I ain't got fucking time to do that. This is bullshit, yeah, man. <laughs> It takes me five minutes to make each T-shirt. So, so yeah, no, so iron, iron it for five minutes. You've got to iron it. I've got to iron it for five minutes. Thing I am. I've got time. If you want to wear it, you're gonna to have to iron it that on yourself. You've got to put a cloth over it, and this is the only time I'm gonna tell you this. And if you don't watch the actual podcast that you've paid for, you'll never find out. And you'll wear it, and you'll. Hold on, hold on. So what happens if it doesn't? You don't well, if you then wash it, it'll fade or fall the part. <laughs> no, the Dude, and have also you, the t-shirts have you handed cheap. out any of the t-shirts yet? Uh, I've sent out a few, yeah. And you haven't told people you haven't ironed No, I have usually do, I think. I you've got to iron it on. That's a con, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to iron it on. Take me a days to get through. I've got to try and write some shows. I'm already making t-shirts all Does the anyone time. else here think that's out of order that he's not ironed it on? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, you led the audience there. I'm not having that. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone think I'm really cool for not ironing the t-shirts? <laughs> Yeah, see? Oh, it's the label! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Do you, are you any good at art? Because I'm not very good at art, but I'm kind of quite obsessed with becoming a famous artist. No, I really wanted to sort of... Um, I really wanted to, when I was younger, I wanted to become like a graffiti artist. Oh, right. Yeah. Sort of part of my hip-hop heritage. Yeah. Um, but it turns out I lacked the artistic skill and the courage, <laughs> which are two of the things that you need to be a good graffiti yeah. artist, really. But yeah, I've got no skills whatsoever, really, no. in, that, in that regard. But do you come up, because I come up with conceptual art ideas. I think comedy and conceptual art aren't that far apart. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of times. So I came up with an idea of, I can do it with my daughter, of saving every single pair of shoes that the person ever wears. Yeah. And just lying, laying them out in a line. And then that's their whole life in shoes from a baby to death. Every pair of shoes they ever had. Right. That's a nice piece of art, isn't it? Yeah, you wouldn't need to iron that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I often think about most what, artists don't have to iron their work. I have to say, no one's going. Oh come on! <laughs> I'm an artist, Bloody, not an ironist. Oh god, yeah. I I I, I, thought, I think about I think about if I was I would I don't think I would ever bring out merchandising, but right. I do fantasise about what that merchandising might look like. Thought about just like a blank T-shirt. 
pair of glasses and then just one lazy eye <laughs> behind one of the lenses. I thought that'd be quite cool. Do you think uh, on the imdb.com, it doesn't, you know, it has lists your things and then sometimes there's trivia and under your trivia all it says is trademark lazy eye. <laughs> um, do, would you say it was a trademark? Your lazy eye it's not. Uh, I just you've I got a lazy it, yeah, eye. I, was, I don't think it's. <laughs> it hasn't got me work. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're looking for a guy with a well, lazy eye. I, I just got, somebody uh, tweeted me saying, "Have you got a lazy eye?" <laughs> and then I replied, "Yes." I just thought it was a weird question. Then replied, "Horner syndrome?" Question mark. <laughs> and I thought, "What is going? Are you trying to diagnose? <laughs> like, like, what? What is this?" Um, yeah, I, I saw that. I did see that. Yeah. But some. I, Trademark lazy eye. It's weird. <laughs> I don't. Um, I, it's sort of. It's, it's something I used to be really. I, I was. I was quite self-conscious about. It. At school, I used to get the yeah. Mickey taken out of me about it quite yeah. a lot. And uh, but you know, I don't think. I didn't think one day this is going to make me money. <laughs> <laughs> or IMDb are going to. I don't th think it's even the thing that anyone would, you know it's not like I don't think you'd... it's I don't think it would be the seventh thing that someone would say about me <laughs> let alone my trademark <laughs> but you know it's good it's good to have a thing but you know if you want to make it a trademark or do a show just about that why didn't you do a show called Lazy Eye and with a heart like I could be about you being lazy and then also and then you could do a heartwarming bit at the end about being bullied at school because of your lazy eye oh, that'd be good I could get lazy. the award yeah <laughs> <laughs> I really think this could work. Just do like, just do, just no theme for the whole show, <laughs> right? It's called Lazy Eye. I call it Lazy Eye. I think yeah. I wonder why it's called that, <laughs> right? And then I do the whole show, just stand up about like just knob gags or whatever. Then at the end of it, just go, and you know, <laughs> I was uh, bullied a lot for the um, <laughs> for the Lazy Eye, but you know I got through it. <laughs> And I'm here with you tonight. I've been rummaging around for so long. I thought it'd be great. And my dad's just died. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that. Was an idea I had. Well, I was just going to do a regular show, and then at the end, and go. And by the way, my dad's dead. And then just leave. I oh, thought it'd be a nice way to do it. Just a little in joke. Oh dear. Uh, every time, every time it goes like that, I'm waiting for cacklehead yeah. to, to do the little laugh. Every time you do that, didn't find it funny that time. It was too, mm. I was too assured. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, are you allowed to eat asparagus as a vegan? Yes. I mean, it's close to being an animal, right? What do you mean? Well, <laughs> out of all the vegetables, I would say asparagus is the most because it makes your wee smell, right? Does it make? But your that doesn't make smell? it close to an animal. <laughs> That's not, do you know, it has an effect. It can do something. It's like a magic power. It's like you're eating something and killing it, and it can has this magical power. Yeah, but to nobody make your goes, oh, I don't eat chicken because it makes you wee smell of asparagus. Or I don't understand where you're going with oh, this. because it's like almost alive, isn't it? <laughs> it's as close to being alive as you can be while still being. I mean, somebody's alive. made a very obvious point that it is actually alive. <laughs> 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 Um, with its ability to change your... Because it doesn't change everyone's wheat to, to smell, though. That's the thing. That's why, for me, it could never be counted as an animal. Because <laughs> if, if it made everyone's wheat smell of asparagus, yeah, it's an animal. I think that is... If you can make everything that eats you's wee smell of you, yeah. you are an animal. That's one of the new definitions you of animal. You should write a textbook. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> Does it, hold on a second, right, a couple of things. You, yeah. You've thrown out a lot of information. I am there. doing this. It's a long time since we've talked about asparagus on this podcast. The asparagus doesn't good. make everyone's wee smell of it's asparagus. Not. And some and people, it doesn't make their wee smell. And some why is that? Do they not carry the chromosome or something? Um, I don't, can't go that far into it. Uh, I did used to know, but some people, it does make their wee smell of asparagus. Yeah. But they can't smell it. So someone has to tell them. <laughs> sometimes they will. Sometimes they never. Sometimes they never find out. Having to bring that to someone, <laughs> mate. I think we should have a quick word. <laughs> yeah, I was in the. Uh, I was in the toilet. Yeah. You wee smells of asparagus. <laughs> no, I'm, so, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but sugar puffs make you wee smell of sugar puffs, don't they? Yeah. It's not an animal, is it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> sorry, you're going to follow this too. Sugar, I sugar puffs are an animal. Yeah. Okay. George used the sound guy. Uh, he's Old just, cy, cy boy. Yeah, he's just... Uh, Old fed up, Mr. Fed up. He's just uh, stopped smoking. 
Right. And came in very, he came in full of glee. It's like Christmas Day from today. He came in, I've never seen his, that face was lit up. Yeah. And he said, uh, my wee smells of asparagus I never knew. Because <laughs> he smoked, he couldn't smell. Oh my God. Well, that, is that, that's one of the, they don't put that on the uh, Nicorette advert, <laughs> do they? <laughs> Find out what your wee smells like. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just the guy crying at the smell of his own piss. I can't believe it. All these years, I have no idea. Oh my God. Imagine living till, like, he's probably 25. <laughs> and living all that time, he's like 30. How old are you, George? Oh, now you're quiet. Now you sh clam up. He's like 30. And he's... How old are you? <laughs> he's gone. Huh? What's up with this guy? Have you upset him? He's left. <laughs> None of this has been recorded now. <laughs> well, you know, imagine living all that lot time thinking your weed doesn't smell of anything after you've eaten asparagus and yeah. then eating asparagus and then finding out it does. You can I understand why he's, he's choked up backstage. Yeah. <laughs> he might be just eating some asparagus and smelling his own weed. I, I, um, I had an, an, ex, an awful experience recently in an Indian restaurant okay. where I, um, I was halfway through a gel frazy and I excused myself to go to the toilet. I went to the toilet, had a wee, didn't smell of anything in particular, <laughs> came back and sat down, and then I realised, as I sat down, that I'd curried myself. <laughs> what I mean is I sat down and we carried on talking, and then I began to experience the most oh. intense burning sensation in the wink. <laughs> that I, and then I had to excuse myself again. <laughs> and just go and deal with it. It's horrible. Has that ever happened to you? No, I've happened to... I mean, I think I'm, I might try and do that on purpose. I think I would like that. I, have you ever had that... Um, have you ever had that shower gel with the... Uh, yeah, the minty. Tree? Yeah, it's nice. Tea tree oil? Yeah. Oh, God. 45 Good. minutes I'm in the shower with that. Exactly. It's exactly. So it can only be like... No, but it's in, not like that. It's a more intense version no, of that. No, it's not. Richard, are, it's not the same thing. Honestly. I really like eating curries because they're really hot, so I can't... You know, imagine... No. I don't like, think. Well, do it. I'm going I'm to do it. Go, go and dip your winky in a jar of patek. <laughs> see, see how that goes. It's going to be dreadful. What did? You, how did you counteract it with yogurt or with? Uh, can you, well, I'm, I'm a vegan, your, so yeah, I can. But that's it. not eating, is it? Yeah, but you still. I think sticking your dick in it. <laughs> I, I think that does contravene. So does that mean you can't have sex with a woman because the woman is alive? You put your dick. Well, that's in. a good point, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> It's a really good point. Thank you, yeah. There's wow. a lot of grey areas. But listen, th yeah, but listen, I don't think if I was caught yeah. with my dick in a pot of yoghurt and somebody went, that's a bit weird. Well, I'd have sex with women. There's nothing strange about this. Do you know I, mean? I don't think if you were caught with your dick in a pot of yoghurt and would go, but you're a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's vegan. It's vegan yoghurt. I don't know what they put in it. Oh, God. <laughs> That was, you really snookered me with that point about, yeah, anyway. Yeah, thank you. I know, you know, even, I'm, I'm very tired. Yeah. Not so tired as I should be, apparently, because I've managed to... That's an, incredible. What a life you lead. Eight till six. Yeah, but she still makes noise, so she still wakes you up, but she doesn't right. wake up. Do you go and check in on her every time? Well, we've had, I, one of us sleeps in with her, or we both sleep in with her. So we either come, we have a cot in our room, it's very right. interesting, or, or she's got her own room, but one of us will sleep in there with her feet. On the floor? She's on her own. No, there's a bed in there as well. Oh, is there? Hello. <laughs> Things are going yeah. pretty well for you, aren't they? If I want to have sex with someone in front of my baby, <laughs> it's all, it's all. Should we go, Hello. Do, should go and have, <laughs> she can have sex in front of the kid? <laughs> This is how we made you. What do you think? Are you appalled? She isn't appalled by anything at the moment. So it's, no. it's a wonderful place to be in life where nothing, you can't actually do anything wrong. No. Uh, you, no you are, none of your actions are um, malicious. No. Even if they are annoying, they're not, they're, not, they're not malicious. It's a wonderful time. That's why I think like, I'd like uh, to be a baby forever. I, at what age do you think you'll start trying to reprimand your child? I don't know. Yeah, I, was I was thinking about this. I don't know. I, mean, I would imagine when they can actually actively say something or do something they know is naughty. Which well, must be about one years old, is it? Yeah, but like a few weeks ago, our youngest repeatedly smashed me in the face. <laughs> and my wife said, stop that, it's naughty. <laughs> 
And I thought, well, this is ridiculous. I mean, I don't know, he doesn't know what he's, he's just, you know, I, don't, I thought it was utterly pointless. Yeah. And I pointed that out to her with the same level of tact, I just explained it to you. Yeah. <laughs> and we had an argument. <laughs> <laughs> but I just thought it was too early. Too early, that it is. It is too early. He's got I no clue what's going on. So well, my wife's not a great mother, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of start to think they're understanding something. I mean, that's what she, so she's laughing properly for the, in the last sort of month, she's laughing at things, and you kind of think sometimes she gets why it's funny as well. It's not just laughing, because this is, you, you understand yeah. the absurdity of something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quite early. It's quite nice that that's the, the first bit of communication is, is smiling and laughing beyond yeah. the totally selfish bit of just crying because I want something. The first bit where you connect with someone is to smile at them. And you, you constantly try and play for that laugh, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's I lovely. mean, it's just, uh, and it's really annoying when she doesn't laugh at me for <laughs> a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and then you find, but she, it's, I, I she, she'll find something funny for 30 seconds a minute, and then yeah. never funny again. Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? When yeah. you realise that the baby has lost interest in this joke before you have. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a really horrendous feeling. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, uh, you know, talking of babies, we should probably get home and see our babies. Yeah, good point. Or we could just good stay point. here and talk more about ham hands. And, uh, <laughs> which you, uh, that's, that'd be, I did ask my colleague about the ham hand. I, I'm, I'm going to assume, if you ha could have... I'm not going to assume it, just because you're yeah. vegan, you might have a ham hand. OK. If you could choose between having a ham hand or an armpit that dis di dispense sun cream, much sun cream, no, and then... Uh, Enough sun cream for you to use personally for a year, for free, out of your armpit. Or a hand that's made out of ham. It's not, no animals died. It's just ham grows out of your hand. But, uh, and and then you can eat it, that. And it keeps replenishing itself. Yeah, it replenishes and you can eat it. And it's not actually ham, but it is ham. Ham hand. Okay. 100%. <laughs> so you'd like, you would like to eat the ham if no animals died for the ham. Yeah, you know like when, you, when, they, when they talked about just creating meat, yeah. growing it? Yeah. You that sounds that. interesting. If I found an animal that was just dead, yeah. I'd eat it. Because it, it's just dead, isn't it? It's just yeah. going to go to waste. I'd, yeah, how far would that go, though, would you, if, you, if there was well, an animal sort of crossing the road and you think, you, <laughs> you know, I could hit that dog. <laughs> I could run that dog over. Yeah, I mean, if you'd the, have to I mean accidents happen. <laughs> That's, you know. I think the law is that of, of that. One of my friends uh, has eaten roadkill. And I think the law is as long as you haven't run over, then, you know, if there's pheasants or rabbits or whatever, that's your, that's your legal... But then can't you just arrange for a mate to drive yeah, in front of you? Right. You drive like a maniac through this field of pheasants. <laughs> so, I fancy some pheasants. So you would eat... If you, don't you think that's more monstrous than... Or is it... Well, I suppose it isn't. If you can grow meat I, in a laboratory, I don't you can ever, do. Yeah, I don't ever use sun cream, though. No. Uh, and I know I'm... Spo I think I'm supposed to. Yeah. But I just don't. Okay. It's bad, isn't it? Is that bad? It is bad. Yeah, I think you. Am I going to have problems? Yeah. Do you ever go outside? Well, I, I did. <laughs> Six years ago, I was a white guy, <laughs> and, and I, I, I think it may have had an effect. I do go outside. Yeah, I mean, I do. Occasionally, I do, but only when I'm told to. Okay. But I won't have my own accord. But that is bad, isn't it? I should do really. I hardly I need to be one of those armpits. That's you what do. I need. You'll need that. I, I, used to, I realise now that I'm going out to parks with my family, which I never used to do, how much of my life I've spent just inside yeah. the curtains drawn. Uh, do, you, do, you, do, do you feel like a proper dad? Because I feel like somebody that's pretending to be a dad. And then like, we'll go to like a farm park or something and be wandering around, <laughs> and the people that look like dads, and I think, I wonder if they're pretending like men. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of just find, I, I still find it surreal if I start. It just, it's so nuts. Yeah. I mean, it's so ridiculous. How can you not believe there's a God when you can create a human life? It's just nuts. It's just fucking, I can't believe there is a God because how oh, fuck, what a weird thing that you just grow a baby inside a woman and then it is alive and then you have to look after it. Such a weird, yeah. such a weird idea. We just accept that as normal. This is a human being here that wasn't here, wasn't how anywhere. Many, a how year many ago. times do you reckon it took for people to go? This is what happened. <laughs> like, like it happened the first. Holy shit! What the fuck is that, mate? And then after the fourth time, like, oh, this is how we create more of us. That's what happens. It pops out of the JJ. Could be. Could be. But then you stop and think about it. So yeah, I mean, I don't. It's sort of weird the idea of being someone's dad. And it's weird the idea of yeah creating a another person and then there are... 
Have we become self-indulgent with a parent talk? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we can edit this bit off at the end. Oh, OK, fine, fine. Let's carry on talking about it. All right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that really fucks a lot of people off. Like people what, talking talk, about kids? Talking about kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it annoying for you? <laughs> you know, fuck Who here has got kids? And you like it, don't you? You like us talking about kids. Uh, and if you haven't got kids, you don't like it. And I agree. I would have agreed with that a year ago. Yeah. No, I don't really. I think, it's, I think there's something uh, real. It's just so weird. You spunk up <laughs> inside someone. And that spunk goes, tr- swims along. Yeah. Goes, I'll go in here. Yeah. And then that grows out from it. grows up like a little... I know, it's tampons. amazing, isn't it? It starts like a bird and yeah. then it becomes a rat. Yeah, then it's like a T-Rex like or something, a is it? What's yeah, it? I don't know. <laughs> and then it's a moth, T-Rex. is it? I don't know. <laughs> then what's the next stage? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, uh, yeah, it's fucking weird. It's gross. It is grotesque and gross and, and disgusting. And if you think that God created that, then I pity you. <laughs> I, the, well, the thing that freaked me out the most about it is that they're up, they're stored upside down. Right. <laughs> so it was in the womb or just in the home? womb? Okay. No, not like yeah. <laughs> you know, for the, you know, you know the thing with the first six months you keep the baby upside down. You know that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, you, you've done from that, a hook. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just weird. It's yeah. upside down. Yeah. It's weird enough. Well, they don't know because there's no gravity inside a woman. <laughs> You keep, I mean, <laughs> you keep, you keep, <laughs> you keep saying shit like this and it's really... Inside the room there's no gravity. Is that right? Yeah. It can't, it, there's something in there that just, just it's from their perspective. It's, it's like space, really, yeah. is it? Inside. Just inside the woman, yeah. Right. Yeah. Where did you read that? <laughs> I didn't, I just... You just, I just, I just postulated. I thought it makes sense. Yeah. Inside I just woman. innately knew that. Right. I didn't need to read it anyway. I've always known that to be the case. And all women are robots, right? That's, we all know that. I got really upset at the first scan of our first child because we hadn't told them that we wanted to know the gender. And then she straight away I saw his winky. And I just thought, if I wanted this to be a surprise, yeah. you've really ruined it for me. And I thought about it, but we, we wanted to know the gender, so it was irrelevant. But I did think about writing a letter of complaint. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to keep your hand over that bit. Yeah. You know where it's going to be. Yeah. At least just like turn the screen around and, yeah. go, and then get it away and then turn it around. That would have been all right. Yeah. Man. Well, my mum thought our, our daughter was going to be a boy because she was obviously looking at the. the what the umbilical. Did umbilical. you snip? Yeah, I did it, yeah. Horrible, not uh, I thought it'd be worse. I'm very squeamish, so I thought it would be... I didn't think I was going to want to do it, and then I quite enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy it. I mean, people told me it was going to be magical, I just thought it was rank. No, it wasn't magical. I didn't, none of it's magical. It's no. awful. It's fucking None awful. of that process it's is awful. nice. It's disgusting. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Horrible, mate. Anyway, I, I'm, you know, I'm tempted to carry on just to annoy those people. <laughs> That's the kind of guy I am. Uh, but we never got to find out... You know, why, what, what's the uh, Rich Pryor... Uh, it's just a mistake. Just <laughs> a big mistake. Sorry, it's just a very extreme mistake. birthmark. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I just really like Richard Pryor. And yeah. then um, I went to get, I wanted to get a discreet tattoo yeah. of him. It's big, isn't it? Well, yeah, because what happened was is that I asked for, she did the stencil, I asked for six centimetre. Yeah. And she did six inch. Uh. And then I turned up and she should gone to the trouble, I might as well just get it done. <laughs> and so that's why I got that, mate. You can, if you're going badly on stage, can yeah. you just hold up your hand like that and, pre- and pretend well, 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 you're Richard Pryor? I, I, just, I just wonder if, like, when I'm really down on my ass, <laughs> yeah. people are just looking at me. I wish I was watching him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's... I, yeah, it's... Do you it's, ever it's think you'll get a, a six-inch tattoo of my face on your other arm? <laughs> the problem with it, the problem with doing that, Richard, <laughs> yeah. is that this is actually quite cost-effective because it doesn't require being coloured in. Right. Whereas <laughs> if I got you... <laughs> I'd have to get it filled as well, which I wouldn't do that. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Okay. If you, if you, yeah, maybe. Okay, I'll take that as a yes. What, what would you do it for me to get you tattoos? <laughs> Let's make a deal. Mm, I'd do anything. <laughs> anything. Would you get me tattooed on your chest? Oh shit. I just 
thought I was going to have to wank you off. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that means. <laughs> I'm oh, that's prepared. what that means. <laughs> he, did, he didn't take the universal wank signal. I don't know. <laughs> might, I, I don't think I'd like to get a tattoo. Yeah. It hurts and stuff, doesn't it? It doesn't hurt that much. Right, OK. Yeah, it's fine. All right, fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll get you. you haven't got I'll any get tattoo. your face tattooed on my face. OK. All right. That's a deal. That's a deal, right? You've seen it. It's happening. <laughs> Exact representation, and then I'll go around doing really bad gigs <laughs> as you, <laughs> and then your career will be over. Oh, I thought you were going. I do really bad gigs because that's how to do my <laughs> no. impression of me. Oh, it's going <laughs> to sabotage. It's going to sabotage your career. Anyway, look, we've done enough. We've done. We've done more than enough. So let's carry on and do some more. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but no, we will. Uh, we, what, what's co what's coming up? Have you got anything exciting coming up on the telly or anything? No. What's it like being on the telly? Is <laughs> you got on the the Bake Off thing? You on, uh, extra the, slice? Yeah. Did that, mate? I yeah. was meant to be on that, and then I didn't get on it. What do you mean? Yeah, they asked me to do it, and then they said there's. I'm not gonna, someone did it twice. Was it Josh? I think Josh Whitcomb did it twice. He took my spot. They like it might have been you. Did you do it twice? No. No. You only did it once. What the you must, what are you must talking be about? annoying having you on because the veganism. Oh mate, so 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 th I couldn't eat any of the cakes. No. But they asked, you know, the, the audience bring in cakes, and then this girl said, oh, "I've done, I've done all vegan cakes," and I got so excited, I went over and tried them and ate them, and I said, "What made you do vegan cakes?" That's amazing. She goes, "The producer told me to." <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> really ruined the magic of TV. For yeah. Me. Um, is that? I was, you know, they approach you about stuff. Yeah. Not, well, they approach you about a lot of stuff. <laughs> they, they approach me occasionally about stuff. And sometimes you're in the, you know, you're nearly going to be in it. And they're saying, oh, which dates are you available? Yeah. And I gave them the dates I was available. And it wasn't all the dates. And so I didn't end up getting to do it. Were you a Bake Off? Are you a Bake Off fan? No, my wife really is. So I yeah. do end up watching it. And then I, yeah, quite like it, actually. Jam donuts seem like a massive ball ache, don't they? <laughs> do, 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 like, I, I don't understand. I'll tell you what the worst one is, is the, the tea cakes. Do you know the tea cakes with the biscuit and the chocolate dome and all that shit? There's so many steps to that. I just don't understand how that could possibly taste so much better <laughs> that you would go for all of that rather than just buy... They're like a quid yeah, that's, for six of them. That's probably How could it taste so much better? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's probably a flaw in the whole British Great British Bake Off system. Well, no, some of them... Why are, have you bothered making this cake? You can buy one from Sainsbury's. No, 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 no but, but some of them, they're not all like that. Some of them you think, well, that looks amazing. But if you're making, you know, if they're making some amazing cake, or so, you can, it's better than buying it from the shop. But it, that tea cake, you've got to make the biscuit, then you've got to make the marshmallow bit, you've then got to fill the domes with the chocolate thing, then you've got to drop the bit, then you've got to fill, pipe the mar mm. How can it be worth it? Sounds nice, though, as you're describing it. The well. way that you describe it, I think we're going to shit quite fancy one of those, because the marshmallow. Yeah, but you're not going to go, I fancy one of those, let me go and spend 17 hours making one. <laughs> you're going to go and buy one, aren't you? Well, you are, aren't you? Just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah, see? So. <laughs> I was just thinking through it properly. Well, we got to that nice stage of the evening where everyone, there's a nice few like, people like me in Tomorrowland last night falling asleep. <laughs> yeah, I fell asleep in Tomorrowland. If you don't go and see Tomorrowland, I don't know why my wife, I have all the films, why did she choose to go and see Tomorrowland? I thought it looks all right. The trailer does, the trailer has the only good bit in it, which is everyone around the, Yeah. It I makes it look movie. like it's a real kind of... It's n the rest of the film isn't really like that. I was very disappointed by um, Avengers Age of Ultron, actually. Oh, were you? Yeah, really disappointed. Mm -hmm. I'm a big comic fan. Has anyone else seen it? Yeah. Rubbish, right? Yeah, like Some people liked it. I saw it and I didn't think it was... I, didn't, wasn't, I wasn't in either way. Well, I thought the first one was excellent. The first Avengers movie. All right. Sorry, you thought the first one was all right? They're all right. It's stupid, Nick. Grow up. <laughs> Oh, there's no gravity inside a woman. <laughs> there's too many superhero films. That, that is true. But, but Avengers was a great movie. Yeah, it was good. It was it's a great good. movie, right? M much better than Age of Ultron, though. You've got to admit yeah, that. Better. Yeah. Oh, OK. Age of Ultron, agree agree. messy. Messy second act, sorry. It was a messy second act. Tedious. Tedious, thank you. I didn't massively enjoy the Age of Ultron. My wife liked that one. Did she? I just go where my wife tells me to go. There's a good cinema in, uh, in Notting Hill where you can go with your babies. 
Right. It's from, seriously, it's on Monday, Monday mornings, you can go take your baby. It's not for your baby, it's for you. Yeah. But you can go with your baby and everyone has a baby, so no one cares if your baby makes a noise. Little, just a little tip for you. I'll tell you what my son... By the way, I'll tell you what my son... I don't think we talked about the kids enough. OK. My, my, <laughs> my second son, what he's watching all the time on YouTube, this what he's obsessed with watching, is videos of people opening loads and loads of Kinder Eggs. <laughs> like, so, it's like an hour long. This, it starts, there's like 40 Kinder Eggs, and then there's some funky music playing, and then they, op they take one, show it to the camera, open it, there's a toy in there, they put the toy together, they put it to the side, then they get the next egg. An hour. Yeah. Hey, he loves it. Sounds Daddy good. egg video. I, I just think he's getting dumber as it goes on, this thing. Has anyone else seen these? Like, do you watch them? Do you watch them? Yeah, it's crazy. What is this? It's unbelievable. Oh, I like mate. Kinder Eggs. Pardon? I like Kinder Eggs. I've watched that. Because you then you don't have to buy or shoplift the Kinder Eggs. Shop Kinder Eggs are easy to shoplift. See that? Oh, you're notorious for this, aren't you? See that? Imagine that's Kinder Eggs. It's not that big, is it? Just walk out. I got um. A no one's going to be expecting a 48-year-old man to steal them. <laughs> is that? I got a lifetime ban from Crawley Woolworths. Did you? <laughs> because I stole a Gladiator's chocolate medallion. Yeah. So, you know, you're saying that's easy. Didn't you need to be a lifetime, did it, though, in the end? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, I, sometimes I wonder if they shut down because of the loss of my custom. <laughs> Could be. Someone's left now. They've had enough. <coughs> Let, watch them run. They're running. They're running for the exit. Shop Someone needs a wee. Don't care if you've eaten a chilli, don't touch anything down there. <laughs> OK, no, they're going home. This feels like these people are sort of prisoners now. I mean, we, <laughs> yeah, we've right. we've I mean, lost our momentum. The second sort of, one is great, but it might get to points. Usually this happens. Right. Sometimes you press on through it okay. and it becomes funny again. OK, should sometimes, we try? Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't, yeah, okay. Sometimes you just say, oh, well, let, let's, let's let them go. At least the people at home can go, oh, fucking hell, what happened at the end of that one? <laughs> you can, at home, you can choose. At home, I don't know if you knew that. If you're at home, you can choose. Because some people don't realise, there's a guy, I mentioned him, who, uh, on the YouTube things, yeah. puts when the interview starts, so that you can go straight to the... Oh, OK, bit. yeah. So you can find, right, which is easy to do anyway, right? But you can do that, you, you can fast-forward through any bit you don't enjoy, or just stop watching and go... Yeah, and yeah. There's good stuff, Kinder Eggs being opened. <laughs> That's what I... The minute I heard that, I'd be yeah. bang. I might put a link to it, so... Do you, are you worried about your kid watching it? Do you, know, do you not know your children's That's name? That's what I was just thinking. <laughs> what is her name? Oh, the oh, OK. What's her name, the opener? Amy Joe. Amy Joe? Yeah, she's Play-Doh-obsessed. Play-Doh-obsessed? They wrap them in Play-Doh, and then they open them up. They, 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 they add an extra kinder layer. Kinder eggs in Play-Doh. Kinder eggs? Yeah, they take the toys out of a Kinder egg, yeah. put them in another egg, and wrap it in Play-Doh. Yeah. Wow, well, that is... <laughs> that is a sign of the apocalypse of everyone heard of. <laughs> I, yeah. The other thing that the other thing that's big on YouTube is unboxing, right? And um, which is where it's a lot. A lot of people do it with trainers, where you watch a guy will go, okay, so I've got a Jordan brand uh, box here. Uh, you can see the Jordan logo on the top. Let me just get the camera in there, red outline, and don't know what we've got in here. Uh, and then they open the thing and they go, so this is a Jordan six. You can see the mesh on the side of the trainer there, and the sort of sneaker, that's what they say. Yeah. It gets like millions of views. Just Crazy. Just taking stuff out of boxes. Yeah. When I tried to find out how to put my pram together on YouTube, they had someone taking all the bits out of a box, was the first bit, yeah. and then the second bit was the pram constructed, <laughs> and how to use the pram. And I went, those weren't the, but that wasn't the gap. <laughs> The gap was, how do I get this fucking yeah. net thing well, on the box? What we're going to do is we're going to make a video <laughs> for people that don't know how to open the box or push the pram. <laughs> but that's the, <laughs> those are the two things we're going to target. It was slightly annoying because I watched a lot of this thing thinking, well, it must. Yeah. They must now show how to put this together. <laughs> I can take stuff out of boxes. I've been able to do that for a long time. Um, anyway, we're not going to get to that bit, Rom. It's not going to happen. Do you think so? No. No, I've got faith. OK. What's the time? <laughs> I reckon it's, we can... it's 20 to 11. It is, we have done... This is a quite a long one. Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't felt like it, though, has it? <laughs> 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 okay. 
let's go back uh, stage. Um, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and open some Kinder eggs. You won't be able to do. Can you open a Kinder egg? Because that's made. That's got milk in it. I think it's all right as long as I'm simultaneously sticking my dick into the yogurt. <laughs> I think it balances it out somehow. And chocolate surely is an animal. Chocolate's got a cat as an animal. It's so delicious. It's got a cat. As an <laughs> surely that's part of it. If it's something. Because animals are really delicious, that's part of the problem, right? Right, so yeah. That is, chocolate, that is part of it. chocolate, I think, is nicer tasting than animals. Yeah. So that makes a chocolate a super animal. Like a, it's like the blueberry of animals. <laughs> that that was blueberry. a weird reference, <laughs> aren't they? Because <laughs> nothing like the blueberry of animals, mate. I think, I reckon a, an hour ago that would have landed. <laughs> It's people are mumbling. I think when it's when men start mumbling about really we have to go because of our train. No, it's okay. I'm not. I'm not blaming you. What I'm do you? Blaming, I'm what, totally blaming us. What do you genuinely think of the last 45 minutes of this? I've I listened to all 60 podcasts yes. over the past yeah. three months. And, yeah. months, and so this is the this is the worst one you've ever seen. No, not the no. worst. <laughs> 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 no, I've, I've really enjoyed it. Oh, good. I've really enjoyed it, and it's been. Really enjoyable, really enjoyable. I gave this man a script earlier on. <laughs> hey, mate, what do you think of me? I think you're a really enjoyable podcast. I come from the planet X5. <laughs> yeah, they're really enjoyable. You're the, you're the most you pick... enjoyable podcaster in the whole universe. <laughs> Didn't you pick it up a bit further than that? That's good. Thanks for coming along. Do you re are you slightly regretting coming along, though, because you, you can't? Because, like, now you're here. No, not at all. You can't. But anyway, when you're at home... I can't then talk to, but like, you know, I am talking to you and you can talk back to me, but you would look crazy. Well, I can play this back to my son and say, yeah. this is me. Or you could play it back to yourself and then join in and go. Enjoy that on my own. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> he can play this back to his son and say, see, see, your dad has a man or something. I, in the end of a very long podcast, the bloke who does it, who you don't know who he is, and no one else does actually said something to me. So, your old man isn't such a loser after all. Oh, yeah. It's his... It's his, like, what's, his, what's the cyclist called? There's on the front page of the Garden Day there's a picture of... Uh, Wiggins. Wiggins, yeah, with his wife and his kids and him holding them, them looking at him with just, like, utter love. That guy, this is, this is his moment. The kids are looking at him. Congratulations, my friend. <laughs> You just stepped up to the big league. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Uh, we're going to go. But thank you very much for coming. It's been Thanks really good. Me. And absolutely fantastic comedian. Do catch him if you can. You're going to tour with the show that you're not doing in Edinburgh? I'll just finish the tour. Uh, I'll be, I'll, oh, no. Give that, me back. Yeah, that, no, I'll be, I'll be touring in the spring, I think, good. probably. Yeah, people will still be listening. Yeah. People will listen to this forever. Yeah. Please give a massive round of applause to Robert Rangan Evan. <laughs> How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>